Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons today. I'm going to jump into a way too early, but I think pretty accurate final 53-man roster projection for the Atlanta Falcons, which again takes place here in June. You got all the way to the end of training camp till roster cuts start beginning, but I'm going to try to guess on who I think is going to make the roster and who will not in my 53-man roster breakdown video. Drop a like down below for this. We'll see how accurate I am. Maybe like the video, bookmark it for you know two months from now, and then you can compare it to the actual roster when it comes out and see how accurate I was. So we'll jump into the 53-man 53, 53 roster projection, go position by position, starting with the quarterback spot, and we already have a little bit of drama. Now, there's no drama at the top of this depth chart. Obviously, Marcus Mariota will be your one. Desmond Ritter will be your two. I'd be shocked if Mariota is not your starter week one. For sure, these two guys make the team, though, and that's kind of all that matters right now. I think Franks is the three. I think Franks is positioning himself very, very well to make the roster. Now, he'll be classified as a, a quarterback, but he'll play on special teams, and he's working with the tight ends and might have a role there as a backup backup tight end or number three tight end on this roster you know there's the Josh Rosen discussion there's some other you know undrafted free agent guys who might be able to make a, a, a run here but I think Franks has earned this spot after playing decently in preseason and really showing that he wants to do anything possible to make this team and so we'll put Franks there as the number three but the main focus is they're only going to keep three quarterbacks and so whoever else is on the roster going into this whether go to the practice squad or be cut all together but I of course see Mariota being one Ritter being two and Franks being kind of the hybrid quarterback uh, who is technically the number three quarterback but can play some other positions. Uh, we'll start with this. Add break, put comments down below. Grade the Falcons roster as it currently stands. Where are you at on this? A, B, C, D, or F? Give me your grade on the Falcons roster right now down below. I think it's a C plus. I think it can be a B minus. I don't know how it gets much better than that as it currently stands. But I'm curious where you guys are at in terms of the overall roster for the Atlanta Falcons. All right, we go to running back. We also throw fullback into this one as well. A little bit of drama here. We got Patterson, obviously, your one. Algier, I think, will jump to the two. I think Damian Williams is your three. I'll put Avery Williams, obviously, switching over to running back as the four. And Keith Smith, he's the fifth, but he's the fullback, so he's, you know, the number one fullback. But the focus here for me is definitely Algier. Uh, Allison is the guy who's cut here. I just don't think Kyle Jarlson has what it takes to be an NFL running back. He's had too much time and too little production to actually be relevant. Algier, to me, is going to be the future of this uh, backfield, whether he becomes a super star or not I don't know I just want to see a consistent running game right I just need to see consistency in terms of the running game I want them 100% to be better than they've been the past couple of years and I think Algier is the key here and we'll get a lot more reps than both of the Williams and Damian uh, and Avery respectively Okay, right, before we go ahead and get to wide receivers, um, make sure you guys subscribe to the best YouTube channel for Falcons content. I'm a little biased here, but I think we're pretty darn good. We're at 7,000. Just hit 7,000 subs here on the channel. So swell, uh, thank you and welcome to all 7,024 Falcon fan subscribers who have subscribed to the channel. If you guys like these kind of videos, you like me talking about the Falcons every single day as I try to give you guys fun, new, interactive content, go down below and subscribe. Uh, it's just a red button, totally free, and you guys get way more content that talks about the Falcons than reading a blog or watching SportsCenter, which never has the Falcons on it at this point in the offseason. Um, okay, wide receivers. Let's go with six wide receivers as a whole. Uh, London, Edwards, and Zacchaeus are all to me locks. They're your one, two, and three. Maybe you swap Zacchaeus for Edwards. That's fine, but London is your one. I think Bird makes it with his flexibility at being a return guy. I'm going to put Auden Tate in there. You could swap Geronimo Allison for Tate, as we'll see, uh, but I think Tate is going to have a real chance to make this roster based on his size, and I'm going to throw a bone to Frank Darby. I think Darby has... Yeah, a chance. Now, does he is he 100% going to make the roster? No, and it was very lackluster, even though he had injuries last season, COVID as well. But I think that they don't want to give up on him too early. They drafted him later in last year's draft for a reason. Very rough rookie year. That happens to a lot of players. I think he at least gets this year to have one more shot at it. He comes in at number six, but it's very, very close, especially if there's some other receivers uh, who play a little bit better. Tate, again, is the wild card here. I could totally see him being swapped out for any of the other wide receivers currently on, on this depth chart. Maybe he's cut before training camp starts. I don't know. But I think all of us want Tate to be good because he has the size and the strength and the you know the uh, catch radius that you want in a wide receiver. But can he actually make a roster battling out for this spot is remaining to be seen. But London, Edwards, and Zacchaeus are your top three. And I think Bird slides in there at number four um, as well. Uh, okay, we'll go tight end here in just one second. First, we have NBA Free Agency starting this Thursday, and the guys at our main chat sports studios in Dallas on our main chat sports channel will uh, be having full live coverage. They're live during NBA Free Agency. If crazy things happen, uh, I thought that John Wall is going to go sign and trade, or I guess he's going to be let go, whatever it is. He's going to be with the Clippers, which is interesting. I don't know, John Wall's been irrelevant for a while, but still, they'll have you guys fully covered on what is one of the best, in my opinion, the best uh, YouTube coverage of the NBA Free Agency, so subscribe to our main channel link down below me right now. 
Tight end, we'll keep three. Pitts is obviously really the only tight end that you need to, you know, focus on here. He's going to be the guy who gets most of the reps. You also see, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, Felipe Frank swapping in here, but he's listed as a quarterback. Uh, for, uh, for, Fersker, excuse me, and John Rainey are your uh, other two tight ends who are going to make the roster. Not a lot of drama there. It's going to be pretty simple. Offensive line, they'll keep nine. The question is who will start. Right now we go Matthews uh, at left tackle, Mayfield at left guard, Hennessy at center, Lindstrom and McGarry on the right side of the offensive line. I think that Dolman has a real chance to really take over the center spot, especially if Hennessy were to struggle. I think Schaefer and Wilkinson have chances to win up the guard spots as well, at least the left guard spot, and then Mayfield could slide over to right tackle. I don't know, but this is what the nine are going to be, in my opinion. The question really is going to be, who starts and who does not with that center position being the main focus. Dolan's been getting reps at center during OTAs and minicamp and all the rest that they've been up at Flowery Branch for the past couple of weeks. I think he's going to continue to have a chance. I wouldn't be surprised if they swap back and forth preseason games between Hennessy and Dolman, who's starting because they need to figure out who the better center is. And Dolman has flashed a little bit here, whereas Hennessy has been, uh, let's just say, a little bit disappointing overall in his uh, uh, play, at least this last season. What do you think? That's our offensive uh, projections. We'll go to defense here in just one second. Do you think the Falcons will have a top 15 offense in 2022? I think they will. Top 15. Give this video a thumbs up right now. If you think they won't, go down below and comment why. And if I think why would be the running game, and obviously the running game per, per, uh, is it coming off of the offensive line, that would be why they wouldn't. But I think they might be, they just have a chance to be under Arthur Smith. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys agree. Uh, okay, we'll go defensive line first here. Obviously, Grady Jarrett, Taquan Graham, Marlon Davidson, Anthony Rush, and Vincent Taylor. No real drama here. The big focus is Davidson. Hopefully, he's going to take the next step. Flashed very, very briefly uh, his, in his first couple seasons in Atlanta. What can he do uh, here in 2022? And then the edge rushers, because this is the way the defense works. You have Carter on the outside. Uh, obviously, Ebby Cady is mixed in there as well. And your fourth runner, D'Angelo Malone, who not gotten a lot of love so far during uh, Falcons offseason workouts and training camp. Or not training camp, but, you know, mini camp and stuff like that. Very curious to see if he is going to get any sort of reps or play time during the season. Uh, we'll find that out, obviously, during training camp as well. But those are your four uh, pass rushers or edge rushers. Rushers, as we call them in this 3 4. Linebackers, Rayshon Evans, Michael Walker, Troy Anderson, uh, Kwiatkowski, uh, does he say his last name? I always mess that one up. Uh, and Nate Landman is one of the undrafted free agents I think squeezes in here, mainly due to the fact that the guy missing uh, is going to be let go. I don't see Deion Jones making this roster. Now, there is an option to keep him. I think he's still technically a Falcon. Obviously, he is. He's just out with a shoulder injury. Shoulder injury. Uh, but I do think they're going to cut him or trade him, so I did not include him on this depth chart. But if he were to be included, you'd bump Landman out, and you'd go ahead and insert Deion Jones. And so I think Jones is going to be off the roster uh, completely because he was either cut or traded. Um, how confident are you guys in the Falcons' defense? What do you guys feel about this defense right now as we go through it? Scale of 1 to 10. Give me your thoughts on how confident you are on the Falcons' defense down below right now. Uh, and again, scale of 1 to 10. 10 being the best, 1 being the absolute worst. Okay, cornerbacks are simple. I think they keep more than most teams, but we'll go with six. Terrell Hayward are your starters. Oliver in the slot. You got Hall, Ford, and Alford to be kind of the mixed backup guys in there as well. Uh, I think Darren Hall has a chance to... Nah, see, he's not going to beat out Hayward, though. You know, you say that he can be competitive, but Hayward's your number two. But Hall will be the backup to either of those guys. Uh, again, cornerback spot is pretty straightforward. So the safety spot. The question is who starts. I think we want it to be, as you see on your screen right now, with Hawkins and Grant, the two youngsters starting at safety. But Marlowe and obviously Eric Harris are going to be two guys, the more incumbent guys, who will probably get the starting reps uh, as you begin training camp. And then as training camp gets further and further along, then they start to lose out those reps. And then hopefully it ends up with Hawkins uh, and Grant winning those positions. Special teams are very, very simple. Obviously, young, young Wei Koo is your starter. Seth Vernon will be your punter. And Liam McCullough will go ahead and be your long snapper. Again, no real drama here. Koo got the new contract. He's one of the better kick kickers in the league. And one of the brighter spots overall on the Falcons roster. I think that's 53. You know, my math's not that great. I, I, I talk for a living. I don't do, you know, long calculations for a living. But, you know, I've used my calculator. It should be 53. That's my best guess. And again, it's, it's June 28th, right? We're not even at training camp yet. This is a pre-training camp roster projection, so things will change. We know they're going to let go of some of these receivers and bring in some more offensive line help. Arthur Smith has said so. Our AtlantaFiveFalcons.com has quoted him on that as well. But I do think if you were to make me bet a lot of money on what I think the roster will look like, this would be my best guess going into the start of the season. Uh, we'll end on this. Fun question. Who is your favorite player currently on the Falcons roster? Very curious to see where you guys go with this. I think a lot of people say Kyle Pitts, and I think a lot of people will probably say Grady Jarrett or AJ Terrell. Who do you think is the best player or maybe your favorite player on the Falcons roster right now? Answer the question as we end today's video. 
There you go, though. That's my best guess. We'll see what happens. Plenty more Falcons content coming up the next couple of days and weeks. For Atlanta Falcons today, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off the rest of your day.